<laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Liv and I are absolutely thrilled to be joined by, I feel like we need a drum roll here or something, yeah. Maggie Dent. Maggie, you <laughs> heard our call. Maggie. <laughs> you might not actually uh, know this, Maggie, because I don't know if you listen to our podcast, but you I, have featured probably yeah. three or four times where we yeah, no, I for you to come. Yeah. I know. I, I look, it was in the background. Every now and then I jump onto all sorts of podcasts because I want to be also, you know, we're all in the same kind of space, right? Yeah. And we've all got the same intention. Don't yeah. We, we want to help parents mm. not lock themselves in the toilet every day yeah. um, to be able to have those moments where we punch the air and say, phew, that worked for a change. Oh. We're all on that page, aren't we? Yeah. And, oh. So well done. One hundred percent. So, for those of you who don't know and who have been living under a rock forever, uh, Maggie is an author and educator, basically a parenting guru. She's the host of the ABC podcast, Parental as Anything, and she's with us today to give us all of the sound advice we've been looking for. We are near, I think we're nearly seventy-five episodes in, Maggie, yeah. and like we have so much to talk to you about. <laughs> so, let's so, go. Let's go. Let's kick it off. So. <laughs> First of all, okay, and it was really hard for us to consolidate because we're like, oh, my goodness, yeah. we've only got Maggie for a short period of time. What are our biggest challenges? So one of them, actually, Liv, I feel like you can kick this one off. Um, go for it, girl. So, Maggie, this is about supporting our kids around their behavioural tendencies. So I'm not going to go into rooster all and we'll save that for question three. Yeah. But we want to build character in our kids Mothers also perhaps have a bit of a tendency to smother cotton wool. So an example, a recent party that we were at, there was this gorgeous oak tree in the backyard. And of course, my eldest wanted to charge to the, the highest limb. And all I could think was, don't do that. No, you're going to fall and break your arm and you're going to ruin the party for me and all the rest of it. So I think that's something that we really struggle as parents to encourage risk-taking behaviours because we <laughs> want to build character. Uh, but on the flip side, we hear ourselves all the time saying, no, don't do this, don't do that, don't be naughty, don't be loud, don't do that risky thing, look left, look right. And I think, God, where's where's the line in that? Oh, I'm sure. Could, yeah. Help. <laughs> oh, and uh, look, let's be honest, parenting really is hard work. It doesn't matter whether you have those beautiful, lovely lambs who are very behaved well and say please and thank you and go to sleep mm. even as a baby. Um, uh, and I guess the first thing I want to say is that they're biologically wired to investigate and explore the world on all sorts of levels through all of their senses. And I know this sounds really difficult to believe, but they actually have a really powerful inner early warning system. So um, that's why we were so cross when they ripped all those old <laughs> supposedly dangerous playgrounds out and put really safe ones in. Mm. Because for some of our children, and you know it's a higher number of boys, but we've got one of these girls who threw herself out of a cot at 14 months of age with a sleeping bag on. And when my son said, what do we do now? I said, not a cot. <laughs> um, she was climbing the tallest of those climbing frames at times in playgrounds. And there were men, really lovely dads, going, someone needs to get that girl down from here because she A, she's a girl, watch mm. out for my blood boil, Ooh, and two, know. she's too small. So the good news is that when we expose them to opportunities to stretch and grow, um, we sometimes have to hold what I call tight knuckles, right? And that story in our head is natural because not only are we the parents, we've also got estrogen and it's our job Otherwise, gosh, if we'd relied on, you know, cavemen to look after the babies, we wouldn't be here today, right? And we're the ones who remember all the stuff as well. So we know there's a reason why we can be a little bit overprotective. Mm. And um, we, I, you know, we've gone into this much more respectful, gentle parenting, which we know the research is so good. And it's almost like it's given us a message why, uh, please don't let them get distressed. Please don't mm. let them get hurt because that, no, and that's, I'm sorry, we've got to wipe yeah. that bit out, right? Yeah. It's what we do when those things happen that's a little bit different. So first thing is um, allowing our children. And um, one thing we know, if you call out to a child who's climbing because you're not feeling safe, you interrupt their natural processing of mm. their own safety, right? So just before they climb, you might just say, have you got a plan? You know, do you reckon that branch will be strong enough? All right. You know, I trust you. And we step back, but we're also within Kuwi. 
okay, those first few times. Mm. And each time that they stretch and grow, you know, and they come down, you don't have to say a thing. I mean, you didn't give them stickers when they conquered the monkey bar. Right, because that peak moment of success shifts something really powerful inside us, and it's so powerful in today's world, which is you know, hot housing our kids to get smart before they're actually even able to climb a tree. So, um, that's the first thing is that you have to learn to, to tame your own self talk, to take your own deep breath, and if you can allow children to play with multi age children of all genders. In those play spaces, you often don't have to do a lot because they'll watch them and then later on they might go a little bit and then they'll go, no, nah, that's too high. But next time I'm going to come back and I'm going to go one more step. So it also means that we don't have to toughen our kids up in those moments because every now and then, you know, here's my little granddaughter at 18 months up the top of that thing and there's a four and a half year old boy who can't get past the second. You don't chuck him up on top of it. <laughs> so I think it's a, you know, that. And one of my big messages, you've all probably heard me say a thousand times, is um, every single child is a one offer, right? Yeah. And um, the relationship they have with the world around them and those key caregivers is completely unique. And they are going to scare the heck out of you a lot. And then sometimes, you know, you've got to trust those instincts. If it's too scary for you, one of my messages is, um, can you please come down from there? I know you're feeling brave, but mummy's just, oh, <laughs> my God. I'm gonna come down. So I'm not <laughs> feeling brave. Can you come down for me? Mm, and that's yeah. a different message than I am saying that's not safe. Mm. Does that kind of answer the question? That's right. Because we, like, we want kids to be kids, yeah. right? And then you've got the societal layer of the yeah. top around. Our kids can't do the things that we did, you know, walking down to the milk bar. Compare and despair. Becomes, mm. And oh. then the, the judgment around society also saying, well, you're a helicopter mother because you're not letting, you know, they, I just feel like at every angle there's something Yeah, you can't coming. win. And you sometimes you've win. got to be a complete outlier. And who right? cares? And maybe, yeah, who cares? Let's just yeah. stick an yeah. arrow in And people will we talk about do what I say, skippy on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and sometimes tune into yourself and going, yeah. no, nope, we're okay with this. And we're going to have conversations around our table about, There'll be times when, um, you know, mummy is getting a little too worried and I need you to come up to me, even as four and five, and say, now, mummy, mm. I'm going to have a go at this, right? Because we need them to know that it's normal for us to feel anxious for them, but our anxiety for them shouldn't then hold them back from things. And can we celebrate the owie, the ouchie, the bruised knee, you know, yeah. the odd broken arm? Because that is exactly what happens mm. when children are, are stretching and growing. And please... Bring back the old rules uh, for pass the parcel as well, because they've got to get used to not getting what <laughs> yeah, they not want. getting their way. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God for Bluey. <laughs> you've, you've helped me a little bit there, because my little lamb uh, really doesn't like taking risks. He's very scared yep. of hurting or failing. Yeah. Um. So I like that idea of if he yeah. does fall over and hurt himself, celebrate that just yeah, for yeah. giving it a can crack. I, can I tell you a tiny funny story? And that is, um. So one of the things you say to children when they fall over, ready? There's because sometimes what we do is we scoop in and pick up girls because we think they've automatically been too weak and hurt themselves. But for boys, we often say, oh, come on, mate, you're right, you know. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it is we bend over and say, are you okay or do you need a growing up's help because I'm right here, but I think mm -hmm. I think you might be okay. And also that celebrating, what is it then when you do hurt yourself? Do you, do you, um, do you want a kiss or a hug? What do you want? And I had one of my <laughs> boys as a four four-year-old in a public playground run up to me and said, Mummy, will you kiss my penis? Because <laughs> he'd hurt it on the swing and I'm standing there thinking, holy. And I went, no, mate. Might get arrested kissed, for that. <laughs> kissed my finger and popped it down near his penis uh, and we all won. But at the end of the day. Oh, that's true. Oh. Don't you love those moments? Oh, oh absolutely. I'm going to cut in there because I think for those of us who perhaps don't know, can we explain the rooster and lamb philosophy? <laughs> Okay, so what we just what I've discovered over the years, and it was interesting when people kept coming up and I kept explaining, you never know what you're going to get. Like it is like Forrest Gump in that box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. And so I'm my best girlfriend has this beautiful placid nine month old baby, which probably got my hormones going. And I thought, can't wait. Got so sleepy, so gentle. And then I got mine. <sighs> Nothing like that, right? And I suddenly, you know, I just thought I was a lousy mother and beat myself up and I tried all sorts of things looking. We didn't have the digital world to search for it. But it took me a while, kind of like, and then I had my second one and he was the lamb. And I've gone, oh man, I've mastered it. Got it <laughs> sorted. And then I had the third, whoopsie, worst rooster ever. 
So I suddenly realized, hang on a minute, there's something going on here no one's told me about. So the temperament tendencies mm. are definitely, with the, we land with them. They are absolutely hardwired. However, we do, we can influence like that lamb of yours. Um, you, you, you can build some more courage and bravery and assertiveness. Um, and for the rooster, he has to learn some empathy or he's just going to be a narcissist and a horrible human. We can influence it, but their tendencies Oh, my God, those roosters, aren't they? Heightened sense of their own importance. And then there's another thing over the years which Dr. Vanessa Lapointe and I have kind of chatted to because she talks a lot about dandelions and orchids. So it's a it's a similar thing except that you can be a rooster orchid, which means that you're feisty and strong and demanding and you can get into power struggles. But, man, if you get embarrassed or upset, your feelings go on forever, particularly girls. They can go on for two hours like I wasn't quite so aware of that. And, of course, when I did all the research around it, I'm pretty sure that was me as a little girl. And then you can also get the the cruisy dandelion. They just thrive in every environment. They just rock through things. And, oh. uh, and yet they can too, still be a little sensitive, but they tend to just navigate so much quicker. So there's this kind of four-way thing um, that influences the choices we make because I can tell you, you know, we know boundaries are really important for, as parents. And I want to encourage that message again, because yeah. every now and then I see a parent who just wants to cave because that child's really upset they can't have the cookie before dinner. And I'm going, no, no. I know it's hard for you right now, but that's that's what happens in our house. It's no. But the boundaries for roosters, they are so important. Mm. Yeah, especially because we want them to go into classrooms and know there are boundaries. And we know they want to go to workplaces later. Your lambs don't even know you've got boundaries. Don't even want to push up against them. So again, Light bulb save your energy. Going off in my head right now. Yeah. <laughs> save your energy yes. for your big battles too. Yeah. Save them for the big ones, not the little ones. Like, did they clean their teeth today? Mm, oh, yes. are they jumping on their sister because they think it's funny? You know, there's some yeah. different boundaries that we fight harder for. And I think that's great. And one of the um, the boundary setting is something that Liv and I spoke about more recently in an episode. And I'd love your thoughts on this. So we're both saying that when you're trying to set boundaries, when you're with children in public, no, you can't have that chocolate at the supermarket. No, you can't be silly and, you know, run around to a restaurant. You, you're trying to set those boundaries. We both find it really intimidating to, I guess, I say discipline, you know, in talking marks and set those boundaries, particularly when there are others watching we were both like what is that about and also any advice on parents who are really struggling in public yeah such a good one okay so one of the first things I suggest about that and let's just use the supermarket one one of the things I think we've got to recognize is that there are sometimes our children just do not enough have enough energy in their nervous system to navigate a shopping center right they're done especially after you know some long daycares and some of our kids because of the amount they do now at school so you've got a tired exhausted child and you're just putting them to a highly stimulating environment they've got no space to deal with any no's second one is that if i'm going to pull up to the shopping center i might so boundaries in our house is if we've done all our chores um the day that we might get a treat when we go to the shopping center is a monday and a wednesday and a friday so before we get out the car we let them know what day it is so again, it's that forward, you know, setting up an expectation that they're able to respond to. And then when it gets to that moment, um, there's a couple of beautiful things that um, I've learned over the years is that, you know, when they first ask for it, we and it's a toy or something, you know, and I love this, that we just might say, is, is that something you might really want some take, you know, maybe for your birthday? So let's take a photo and um, we might be able to put that on your list. So in other words, we haven't said the definite no, we've just said not now. Right, and we've given them hope, so we might say, "Come on, let's go." Or it might be something that says, um, "We get down really close with them, and you know, once again, we might work on that tickle spot on the back, which promotes that serotonin that says, "Yeah, yeah, no, remember, today is not that day, sweetheart, but it is tomorrow, right?" So it's that it's the way we do it too. And I think once we recognise when there's not enough and they're flooded, mm. a they can't hear us. And B, um, that's not a naughty, bad child. And that's the thing. We've got to hold on to our own reframe and be what our child needs in that moment, which is a safe base. So make sure they don't run on the road. Make sure they don't kick the shop to bits. But I'm going to let you discharge that cortisol because that's exactly where you're now. You're flooded. It's got to come out. And, you know, I keep saying in all my seminars, if you see a parent in that situation, give them a, give them a wink, give them a thumbs up, give them a smile because 
That is developmentally completely normal behaviour for a child who is dysregulated due to all sorts of things uh, around them in their environment, not because of lousy parenting. That's a big one for us, isn't it, Liv? <laughs> I was, while you were talking, Maggie, I was like, what am I going to do with those coin machines that they beg me to put $2 in to sit on every time we walk past? And supermarkets okay, and shopping centres have put them in every corner. <laughs> I know, right? And I'm a, gra I'm a grand nanny now. But How one do we of the things I reckon is it's a, it's a once a, a once-a-week job. It's mm. a once-a-weeker. You know, it's a once a week or it's not complete denial. It's like all of us ban chocolate from us. And what do we do? We hang on for it every moment, try to sneak it out. So once again, it's once a weeker. So do you want to have your go today? Because you won't be able to do it the rest of the week. And when they come back to it later, remember, we've, they don't even know the days of the week. But at the end of the day, we need to. And I also think for even young children, um, we give them a notion that um, it's $2. So yeah. um, have you picked up your toys? You might be able yeah. to work towards, you know what I mean? We can't endlessly keep doing that. Mm. Um, and I, I just think there are days we're too tired. We haven't got anything in our nervous system. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a sign of us being weak or anything. I just think there's some days anything for peace right now, right? Mm. And don't beat yourself up. Fortune, they're only $2. That's been happening mm. since I had my boys yeah. and I've got a little grandson who's, oh, man, mad, yeah. mad about trucks. And in our large um, local shopping centre, they've got a truck one. Well, he just loses his. Yeah. So we all avoid They're taking him cool. to the shop. Yeah. So you drop yeah. him at my place, you chuck him to the neighbours. You just, yeah, yeah. if you can avoid it. And this is one yeah. of the things. It makes it hard to do because we're further away from each other in our tribes. Mm. That's what we kind of did, you know, in a, in a large country town was because we knew kids weren't very good in the shopping, especially, oh, can you imagine four boys, me taking oh. them shopping? Oh. Actually, it was quite funny because they all had some, something they had to get, but they get to the, we got to the, you know, through the turnstile and it's like, push, oh. they're off like a hunter. So one's got to get bread, one's got to get the yogurt, one's got to get apples, oh, one's okay. got to, and then I'm able to get a bit of work done. And then oh. there's this yelling, mom, oh. and <laughs> they got good to find me without yelling. But in actual fact, it was like another activity, like going to the park, uh, but they had a very important mm. job to do. So they weren't going to mm. hang around me, just annoying the heck out of me. Oh, God. Can you imagine us doing that these days, Liv, in oh. like some of the uh, shopping centres that we go yep. to? Like, you get a lot oh, of... Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say I hope there were lots of parents giving you that knowing wink too. Well, yes. I couldn't because they were so, so fast. Important. They were very fast. <laughs> Plus um, I kind of was that crazy lady that taught most of the people that worked in shopping centres yeah. later. Uh, and yeah. unfortunately I was, a, I was one of those loved teachers. So they'd often say, no, I saw your son down in aisle four. He's it down in aisle four. Oh, the other one, I think you can't find the yogurt. Cream like, they were actually watching out for my boys as well. So. Oh, oh, my gosh. I, I love that. that. Talking about... Um Talking about things that support us as parents when our tanks are very low and one thing that I know is very contentious these days is technology. So I'd love your thoughts on this, Maggie. I mean, for example, we bought iPads for the kids when we went overseas last year. It yep. was a godsend. We needed them on the planes. Thank you very much. We have them in the top drawer and we pull them out when our tank's really low and we just, we're sick of the kids fighting over the same TV show, blah, blah, blah. Here's your iPads. Um, otherwise it's the TV. Now, a lot of, some people do no screen time. Some people do, re you know, regulated screen. What are you your thoughts on technology and um, how we could essentially be using it in the best way. Oh, look, thank you for taking them on long haul flights. That's exactly where they need to be. <laughs> hey, we're going to, we're going to travel. <laughs> Seriously. Um, you know, I, I, you know, like I, I've read all the research and what we, what we do know is as little as possible in the first five years, mm. simply because they're using all of their senses to be able to develop all sorts of parts about them, their social emotional learning and the number of words they can use. And you don't develop a gross and fine motor skills by swiping. So again, as little as possible, in those first five years. And also, um, you know, under five, they're usually okay with some kids' programs. So I'm not anti-TVs um, because what mm. I tend to find is if you've got boys, they're doing somersaults anyway, mm. driving their trucks around, throwing cushions at their sister. So they're not sitting. So it's the sitting and the passivity. Um, mm. We do know there's been a 65% increase in myopia because there's not. it's not because of the screen. Mm. It's because they're not running around outside for their eyeballs to stretch. So you know, prevention is obviously a really good idea. However, we do know, and any of the um, parents who have neurodivergent children 
unbelievably helpful in regulating our neurodivergent kitties. So we know there's a space for that. We also know that there are some wonderful um, apps and things on there that can teach your kids how to draw unicorns. See, I'm all over that. So there are some creative pursuits that can be on there, you know, but my challenge is that it's what can they access because we now know that there's been, wait for it, it's awful, but you need to know a 500% increase in inappropriate sexual play with children under six. Um, and that means that either some, they have seen pornography or somebody has seen it and is doing it to them. Mm. And secondly, we know that children as young as seven and eight are actually being um, capped, what is called capping. So they are getting manipulated to send photos of their private parts and then sextortion is happening in that young. We cannot drop them into the digital highway without absolutely being the same parent they need to protect them. So you can use some of our devices safely. Look, I know one of my granddaughters, that's where her calming music is on. Mm -hmm. um, that's where she also, you know, that's where she sometimes watches Bluey when, you know, she's mm -hmm. she's she's re-regulating because her brother out in the TV room has jumped on ahead yet again. Mm -hmm. So again, it's actually what we do um, rather than um, how often as well, but we would love it if it's very occasional in those windows. And then please don't give your kids a phone for as long as possible. Yeah. There's no question the evidence is getting stronger and stronger in that place. And then I think my other big message is what are we doing with our phones? You know, so if you're using your phone and look, let's be honest, we can we can book the school lunch, the doctor's surgery, can mm. check what time their soccer game is and massive amounts of instant organisation, which I pff, didn't have. So we need to t talk to our children about, okay, this is what we're doing on it. This is why this is a positive, okay? And then I'm going to turn my phone upside down or I'm going to hide it because that's actually one of Dr. Christy Goodwin's biggest messages. We don't tend to look at it or be interrupted by it when we can't see it. And when as soon as our kids see our tension flick because of an alert, you've just broken what is the most important thing in children's lives, and that is that they feel that they're worthy of your attention and your presence and your love. So, again, you know, I'm not totally anti, but we, we really have to be mindful that it's it's an incredibly dangerous world and a lot of the free apps are teaching our kids how to gamble and they're being marinated in the advertisements you do not want your children, especially sexualised messages for girls. So, yeah, there you go. Chew that up. See how that goes. Oh, I love it. It's um, it's such a wild world, isn't it? As yeah. you were saying that, like, live. Remember when we were growing up, we didn't have these things, and as our parents didn't have to worry about no. this stuff. No, it, oh, no. Yeah. And also, I mean, we now, were probably wondering when you're going to get home from school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because your friends now have got off Now the we can of track victory. everyone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Funny, I was at Ed Sheeran uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there were two girls in front of me who watched the whole show through their phone. You know, they would have been eight or nine years old. And I just, uh, that was so scary for me to see that they are observing their world through a phone. And, and isn't you know, that insane really, though? As parents, we've got to be careful. Precisely. Because you record and, all these videos. Yeah. Do you ever we're, go back and watch them? Because you've got no, five, five no. gazillion of them. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's a, that's a challenge for us because we're still trying to be, you know, a fabulous connected parent. But if there's a screen up there, that child can't see your face. Can't yeah. see your natural delight and being delighted in your child or horrified uh, is yeah. a way of communicating. And we know that yeah. today's kids are turning up with yeah. nowhere near as many words. Yeah. So, um, you know, if they're going to have a device, are we still reading to them? Are we having conversations with them? Are we immersing them in the real world mm. and singing songs together? Mm. It gets mm. tricky. Yeah. Well, you nailed it with we just have to be more mindful and probably yeah. more present in everything that we do and I think it's all our relationships don't you think yeah you know yeah. but it's wired remember that the, the, yeah. the algorithms are wired yeah to steal your attention so you see advertisements and that's what makes me ropeable mm. especially with mm. our teens that mm. they're marinated in incredible mm. amounts of negative content because I'll see mm. more advertisements knowing it damages their mental health and yet mm. no one's doing a thing about it you know, and, and that's really, that, that breaks my heart because I hear the stories later of girls who once yeah. again um, just hate themselves for far yeah. longer than most of us did as a teen. We all went through that patch, yeah. but some of them are so scarred because people didn't even like their digital version of themselves. Mm. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And also I have to only look one way. Well, mm. and that's why our conversations have to start early with both our mm. girls and our boys in that space. Mm. So. 
Mm. Yep, we can do it. And I think I'm actually really impressed with my daughter in laws. I find that they're really over, you know, what 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 they need to do. Um, mm. They talk among themselves, you know, and they've got great girlfriends that they, you know, and that's really how we do this. You know, every now and then we've got to go, what are you doing? I'm getting, I reckon that's a great idea. So our little tribes, they might not be able to see them quite as often, mm. but they are so support. It's when we yeah. have that unconditional support, it's the parents without mm. any, without family mm. or friends. This journey mm. is so tough. And that's why I send a lot of love all the time to the solo mm. parents out there oh. because that journey is is really, really tough. Really, totally. Mm. Now that we have you, Maggie, I'd love to take you back to, well, get your advice to help me with something that I'm struggling with yep. in my house. And I started to allude to it a little earlier around my two boys, two and four. My eldest is a real lamb, like on the highest version of lamb or the softest version of lamb, perhaps. And my second born, my two-year-old, is the fieriest of roosters. And you were kind of you know, explaining your boys uh, <laughs> similar. Yeah. What I'm starting to notice is my eldest, the lamb, is starting to really go into himself because my rooster is so competitive and can do everything and tries everything that, yeah, yeah my lamb almost is seeming exhausted by All it. Right. All right. There's, Help there's me. A... What, how can I bring out the best in both okay, of Okay. So <laughs> one of my most popular blogs ever is the five tricky stages of boyhood, and you've got one in each. So two is a really volatile kind of window. Sometimes it's around three when they're just starting to separate and wanting to be the boss and wanting to have this excess energy. And it's mm -hmm. a really volatile, no, 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 won't mm -hmm. listen to you, won't listen to anyone. Perfectly healthy, but oh man. And we've got to remember that their impulsivity and their need to connect physically, which often doesn't look like it comes from a loving space, is actually a sign of what we call aggression nurturance. So, you know, I want you to have conversations with your sensitive four-year-old who's also in a tricky window where there's a lot of stuff happening hormonally and that makes them a little more emotionally volatile, even in, in, the, in the sensitive way. So the lamb's going to become even more protective and a little bit timid and really sad a bit more, while the rooster, when they get to four, go the opposite. Does that make sense? So why you've got these two things happening um, obviously, the two-year-old you can't reason with at all. And although no. I keep saying, you keep the three rules: try not to hurt yourself, try not to hurt you, anyone yeah. else around you, and try not to <laughs> damage the world around you. And there are times they're going to do that. And remember, our challenge is they 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 have no idea. They don't do it to hurt anyone. Mm. They're not doing mm. it to hurt your brother. Just mm. thought that was funny jumping on him from up there or throwing <laughs> that truck at him. I thought it was funny. Like they just. Oh, it's so frustrating. There's not enough myelin in that brain. Mm -hmm. The four-year-old, again, I want you to check in with him and explain to him that this is what happens when you're around two, as if you're a bit mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever, and that there are times he's trying to actually show how much he loves you. You know, I've seen it so often in, in schools, early childhood settings, when a little boy's mate's about to leave and his mate runs up to him and he, he doesn't even know how to say goodbye, so he punches him in the head. <laughs> And we misread that as being deliberate, but he's trying yeah, to, so in other words, at different times, teach high-fiving and teach little yeah. ways that they can do their mm -hmm. physicality stuff yeah. um, that's not as that's not as aggressive mm -hmm. and that every now and then give some space to your four-year-old to have a bit of safety, mm -hmm. <laughs> do his own thing because they quite it, like It's funny. That. He started taking himself off to his yeah, room. Beautiful. So he's starting yeah. to do that. He's in, yeah. yeah and also the two-year-old self-aware. So. Right in that window when they want to smash stuff. So that really mm -hmm. breaks a four-year-old's heart if they've built mm -hmm. the tower and incomes. Mm -hmm. I've seen that a number of times. So once again, we have to corral <laughs> them into saying. Do you have a camera um, in my house? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 being a nanny. It's been such a gift. I'm going, oh, right, so nothing's really changed. Yeah, yeah, sure. um, and just beyond, one of the things we know in the, um, you know, the research is really strong around this and it really made, kind of validated how I raised my four boys because I had two roosters and two lambs, um, but also a, a dad that worked from seven to seven, so it was all up to me, is the fact that when they experience peak moments of joy and delight in their boyhood, they tend to get on better as as older boys. And my boys are still each other's best mates. You know, they contact behind the scenes. They talk about their parenting. They want to go on surfing holidays together. Beautiful. They are still really good mates. So what that means is we don't make a big thing when the siblings run into each other and hurt each other. We just go, no, hang on a minute. I used to just open the door when it was getting a bit volatile and say, out you go. I'll be yeah. back in five minutes. 
just cool your jets, like relocate, give food, and it shifts their energy mm. around. But also sometimes I would get a whole load of sand delivered on the back lawn, and that, that was it. We didn't see them for a month. Um, they mm. used a lot of water. Mm. There was a lot of sprinklers and water fights, yeah. and, and mm. then I would spend more time at the beach and a park than most yeah. other parents would because – I just wanted them to have those peak moments. And then, of course, they were lucky they took up surfing and then that became the most significant bonding experience for all four of them. And and that, once again, common interest if you can. But I also always had a backboard because I'm a bit of a basketball tragic and I was their basketball coaches. And so often I'd hear them just, you know, they out we go, we'll go and do something. So, yeah. again, what can they do with their excess energy that also is about having fun Obviously, they'd throw the ball at each other's head every now and then and be ridiculous. But I think we've got to kind of cultivate opportunities to let the joyfulness and the light come out with our siblings, um, even if it means your house is going to be messier and it might just mean we're having porridge for dinner tonight because I haven't got mm. time to cook dinner because I've been at the park too long. Remember, mm. it's a really healthy food mm. with Greek yogurt and some berries and a bit of honey. <laughs> I love that. We do a lot of that. A lot. Yeah. There's a lot of porridge and wheat bits in our household. Totally, I am cool with that. As food, absolutely. Uh, or uh, as they get older, toasted ham, cheese, and tomato sandwiches. Cook yeah. it yourself as many as you <laughs> yeah. like. I have no problem. Yeah. Um, and that's that, that. So what we're saying is, what's more important is not yeah. us um, controlling the environment; is us facilitating you know, the opportunity for them to connect in as, as positive way as possible while they don't have a really good prefrontal cortex. Yeah, well said. Maggie, I'd love to know what would you tell yourself, you know, looking back on your parenting journey, one of the biggest pieces of advice, what would you say to, you, to your younger self? Yeah. Oh, the big one is um, I didn't tell anyone all my cock-ups and mistakes for a long time, um, including the one that the first time I went shopping with a 10-day-old baby. Um, I was so excited about the nappy bag and going out after giving birth and becoming, a, you know, seeing my feet again. Um, I got to the local Woolies in my town and got this nappy bag out and everything, and I'd, there was no baby. I'd left him home. I did not tell my best girlfriends uh, until I think it was near my 40th and I had him when I was 26. Oh, I think wow. what we need to do is to recognise when we share those moments, we don't get disrespected by those we love. We actually say, oh, my gosh, now I can share my vulnerability and, you know, or turn up with a coffee because today's not the day. And I think there were days when I didn't get to do the things I'd planned and I remember thinking, yeah not coping, not, not dealing with it. But there were, and then now I look back on that and said, that was exactly what you needed to do. You didn't get to play group. You know, there was a punami or a situation. There was, there was a toddler hadn't slept very well and there's food all over the floor and you haven't actually had a shower. It's not the day. We just anchor down and, and we survive because some of this is just survival, um, you know, and we need to really honour and, and love ourselves and, and take better care of ourselves for sure. Mm, absolutely we're all that. human yes yeah. we're doing the best we can live <laughs> oh I love that yeah. well <laughs> Maggie thank you so much for your time today we've had an absolute blast hashing out some parenting <laughs> advice with you um I mean I feel silly even asking you this question but how can people find out more about you even though you're everywhere <laughs> oh I feel like that I'm everywhere. It really just, you know, at the end of the day, I think one of my sons said to me once early on, probably 15 years ago, Mum, when you Google, you've got all these pages. That was before the Parental Is Anything podcast. Wow. Um, yeah, I have been out in that space. So um, I'm on YouTube and I'm Insta and I'm on Facebook. And I, if you, yeah, and I have written the odd book or two. Um, if you go on, to, honestly, go to my website if you're worried about something and put it in the search bar because my mm. team say I have far more content than any human on the planet. I've probably written something about what you're wanting, you know, to explore because I wanted free content as well, not just mm. people who can afford it. So I'm everywhere. And um, thank you so much for being oh. such good supporters. And thank you for what you're doing, you know, yeah. for parenting in your space. You're just awesome humans. Oh, thank you. We are all Thanks, about bringing the vulnerability to the table and all of our cock-ups. So this is this is what the community is all about. <laughs> um, further details around Maggie, I'll pop them in the episode notes. Thanks again, Maggie. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys.